been a jam-packed day, but I'm very excited uh, because today we're going to address the skin uh, for those living with alpha-1. And we're going to do this. We are happy to have Dr. Alain Brassard, professor at the University of Alberta Division of Dermatology. Please welcome Dr. Brassard. Oh, that was quick. Thank you. Oh, you don't have. So, okay, you hear me? Oh, good. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the Alpha One Canada to have invited me here, and especially Linda Wilkinson, who recommended me to give you a talk. I've been a dermatologist for about 20 years, and I've seen probably three patients with uh, this condition, with the skin. So it's very rare. We don't see that too often. Um, but it's something that we have to think about. As much as the disease can be, or the death defect can be quite dramatic for our patients, for the lungs and for the liver, for the skin, um, and, but for, the, for those organs, it's usually slow and slow onset. For the skin, it can be quite dramatic quickly. And I would like to, hopefully, I'm showing some pictures, and as you know, skin pictures sometimes can be a bit difficult to see, and I apologize for the soft heart in that are in, in the room today. So the objectives, I'd like you to understand uh, the role of yep. I knew that would be coming. Uh, the, the role of antitrypsin, alpha-1 antitrypsin in the skin. Uh, get familiar with the skin manifestation of this defect. Familiarize you uh, with how the paniculitis, which is the, the most talked about conditions of the skin that can occur with this deficiency, can present itself, and how can we manage it? So what is the role of the alpha-1 antitrypsin in the skin? It has a lot of roles. In fact, it has a lot of roles in general for your body. It controls inflammations without inhibiting it. So we need inflammation to fight bacteria. We need inflammation to, uh, to repair injury or for, for wound healing. We need that kind of cells that produce proteins to help the cells to say, oh yes, I have to repair that hole, or recruit some cells to go and kill a bacteria or two. But if you don't control that, then all those cells that want to kill a bacteria or two, maybe the whole cells, what? On this side. Oh, oh you on my face on that side? Okay. <laughs> Well, I, th I thought, I th I th oh, because you're there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I prefer that side because I have a mole on it, you see. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, just f this is a complicated slide. The only reason I put it there is that you see there's a lot of things in our body that are what we call modulated by the alpha-1 antitrypsin. So it's, it, you know, there is an enzymes that are in the lungs, they are in the liver, in the pancreas, in your blood cells, in your skin cells, even for allergy cells in the skin, it, it controls that too. Um, so, and, uh, so those are things that I wanted to show, but I don't, we don't need to go through this. This is just from my residence or uh, to, to learn and to get familiar with. So the inhibitory properties of alpha-1 antitrypsin <coughs> antitrypsin provides 90% of the antiprotease activity. Antiprotease meaning the enzymes that destroys protein. So 90% is from that enzyme to modulate and control. So it's a very, very important uh, uh, enzyme that some of you ha are deficient in. It's really, really important in, your, in our body. And it controls the intensity of the inflammation. Just imagine if you have a little mouse close to a hive, a beehive, and then there's, you know, they send three or four to sting it. But if it's say, for example, you just lay down beside it, taking a sun bath, let's say that the hives belong to you and you say, hey, my hives love me. And you just sunbathe beside that hive. And basically um, 20,000 bees just go and kill the mice. They will probably sting you at the same time. So that's what it's out of control. So that's what we talk about controlling inflammation or the intensity of inflammation. So just think of having a little zits on your leg when you shave your legs, ladies, and then in fact the all your inflammatory cells, everybody, go there and kill the bacteria that went into your hair. Instead of having a zit, you'll basically will have destruction of your whole leg. So that's what we call inflammation. So this is a complicated thing, but you may have, maybe somebody has talked about it. The left side basically talk about the liver, um, and well, 
higher up, and we know that if you, there is the, if the two genes, the Z genes, are present, you still produce the alpha-1 antitrypsin, but it doesn't go anywhere else, so it just is trapped into the, the liver. Similarly, it could be trapped, most of that enzyme being produced by the liver, some of it is produced by uh, the lung, as you probably know. But if you drink, or if you smoke, or if you have a virus, uh, you know, certain viruses, it either could destroy more or ra more rapidly your liver, or could destroy your lungs more rapidly. You see, uh, just at the lower part here, I don't know if that's a marker, yes, oh, okay. You see here in the skin, so there is, it's very rare will, will we have skin manifestations. Those are the two things you could get. The most important and most dramatic that is very specific to the alpha-1 antitrypsin is the paniculitis. Paniculitis means, takes from paniculus. Paniculus is basically fat. So inflammation of the fat by the, s the cells called the neutrophils. The neutrophils are your first line of defense against infection, for example. But it can be totally out of control and just decide to attack yourself. And those cells are nasty because they have tons of destructive enzymes. We need them to survive, but we don't want them too much because they just destroy everything. The other thing is vasculitis. So vasculitis is inflammation of blood vessels. So when you have the, any of those cases that present to, to, to us, you have to think of alpha-1 antitrypsin, even if it's very rare. Oops. All right, so what are the, 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 the other skin? So I mentioned that already. Uh, so those are the inflammation of blood vessels or vasculitis, and angioedema can occur also. So angioedema, think of a kid that takes peanuts and swells up, so that's what angioedema is. But there's a form of angioedema that could rarely be associated with the deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin. All right, so this is a, a picture of the, the, the fat, so everybody wants to have uh, the, the skin, everybody wants to have that amount of fat, so it's, this person's probably 1% body fat, on that cut because in fact the, the, the higher part here you see is probably one to two millimeter in thickness. So basically we have way more fat than this on the drawing but that's where the fat lies. It's under the hair and on top of blood vessels and under what we call the dermis. That's where for example skin aging occur. The wrinkles are from the dermis. The elastic fibers disappear there. Interestingly, in this condition, it's just somewhat similar. The elastic fibers that keeps our, uh, our, thing, our skin together is often destroyed in this paniculitis. So who can be affected by the paniculitis? And what is the frequency? It's very rare. But who can be affected? It's basically the people that have homozygous Z, a deficiency. And there is only, oops, sorry. There's only about 60 cases reported in the literature. So we see that, I, I, if I've seen three, there is more than 60, that, you know, and apparently there's three people in the room who have suffered from this. So it's more than this, but doctors have reported only 60 cases in the literature. So it's still, it's considered a very rare skin issue. It occurs usually in adults. Uh, you know, you have liver and lung issues that can occur in children. Usually adults are afflicted by this condition can occur in women and men, but men have worse prognosis. They have worse outcome with this condition. So because the ZZ phenotype is relatively frequent, it's one in 3,500, 3, the skin is way more, even lower than this. It's one out of 1,000 of those one out, out of 3,500. So can you imagine? It's like one in three million. Okay, so it's not, that according to the statistics. So it's very rare. But it's an inflammation and it's quite dramatic, it's quite painful, and it, can be, it could be mild, but it could be extremely severe and it can lead to acute death, unfortunately. So how does it present itself? Often, you know, where does it go usually? It us it's gonna be usually around the hips, the buttocks, but you can have it on the lower legs, you can have it on the forearms too. And what happens is because when the cells, I talked to you about those neutrophil cells that re release a lot of enzymes to, dis to destroy bacteria and other things, when they are too much activated, what happens is that they release enzymes that destroy collagen, that destroy, you know, collagen, it's important, it's a protein that keeps us together, the elastic fibers that also keeps things tight. So, um, so, and then, of course, if you destroy this, then the fat within the cells will just get out 
and what we, that's what we call oily discharge. It's typical, it looks like oil. Think of olive oil coming out of your skin. This is what alpha-1 antitrypsin paniculitis looks like when it pierces the skin. It's not pus like a zit, but it's more like oil coming out of the skin. It's pretty dramatic when you see it. It's, um, it's diagnostic when you see it. For example, there is uh, pancreas disease can give also paniculitis, inflammation of the liver. And we talk about dish soap oil. So it has a cloudy white color, and that's from the pancreas, interestingly. But it has nothing to do with the alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, when you have a paniculitis, it's like oil coming out of the skin. I'll show you pictures, and I hope you'll be okay with them. <coughs> All right, so usually after maybe one-third of the patients may get a minor trauma, or they don't remember a trauma, and they get like bruise-like feelings in the skin. So they are painful lumps, but they are red. They may be hot, and it can come with fever. So fever is common. So often doctors will think they have an infection in their fat, and they will treat them with antibiotics, and it just, it just doesn't work. So often what you need to do is a good biopsy of the skin and make sure you send it for culture and eliminate infection, yes. But you always have to think about this when the fat is inflamed and does not respond to usual treatment. So the first case of paniculitis as, and it, the, the identification of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, it was a French patient, and her name was Madame Mathilde. And that was published in the Annals of Medic Internal Medicine, well, the Annales de Médecine Interne, uh, in France, in France in 1972. So we know about this condition from the enzyme since 1972. And what you see uh, on the fat here is that the cells are broke. Oh, it's my finger. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. So you see that the cells are broken. This, those are the inflammatory cells in the fat. So when you have fat, you basically don't have those cells in between. And usually the walls are usually intact. They are not broken off. Before Madame Mathilde, uh, that, that, that condition was called Weber and Christian relapsing uh, paniculitis. This condition does not exist since 1972. This condition basically has been identified and associated with the enzyme deficiency since 1972. So, so you see, so sorry about this. I hope you're okay with all of this. Skin pictures are not always palatable, but it can be just this or you can have like, like a bruise, like the skin wants to open up and die, and you see that's that oily material coming out of it. It's very unusual. Earlier I talked about the neutrophils that are exaggerated in the, in, 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 in the skin. Usually when you have too much neutrophil, it's pus. But there is there's so much fat that liquefies that basically you don't see the pus. It's basically liquid oil. And you see the skin stay intact on, the, uh, on top. So this, this, the dermis, the it stays relatively intact, but it's under, the fat dies under the surface and it drains outside. Similar here, we do have like, it's very inflamed. You see it wants to open up. You see the liquid like very oily. You would say that this is Crisco oil or whatever, but it isn't, it's just pain. Or this, very, so that's on the ankle, minor trauma in this patient and I uh, become like a big bruise, very infl and then it can develop into eventually an ulcer. So the legs are not frequently involved, but when they are, they present to us like a leg ulcer that we call, and then you have to make sure that, um, that you, uh, you think about alpha-1 antitrypsin. It's so rare that often it's misdiagnosed, and the intervention, a rapid intervention, the right intervention can prevent horrible things. So this is a case report uh, last year in a, from Germany. Patient presented with this, what we call paniculitis, inflammation in the fat. Sorry about, the, I mean, the next one is even grosser. I'm so sorry. It's the same patient. <laughs> it's the same patient, but all the fat under the leg, uh, on the leg, sorry, died and just opened up like this. Unfortunately, I mean, it's the only case reported that the skin killed the patient. That's pretty dramatic, and it took too long for this to be identified, unfortunately. So don't think that it's going to happen to you, um, but you know, I'm, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty dramatic. So how does it look like on the microscope? I talked to, about it a little bit. So the, the, the fat gets, inf there is a lot of inflammation, and the fat cells opens up, and that's how it, and it's all destroyed. 
all right? They call that floating fat. So because, I mean, it's floating because there is no walls to retain it. That's the sign that the pathologist will say. All right, so how do we treat? Well, the skin, if it's mild, the first pictures I showed you, like, looks like a bruise on the belly and on the hips, that you can, you don't, you know, if there's indications for, alpha, uh, for replacement therapy, of course, that's the best treatment. But just to treat for the skin, you can use anti-inflammatory. So there is multiple drugs that have been used. The best one is Dapsone, so the list there is pretty extensive, but the best one that for mild disease is Dapsone or Colchicine. But of course the replacement therapy has proven to be, you know, a lot of the cases I showed you, the pictures, they have been treated and it's resolved, right? Of course liver transplant uh, is also a, 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 an option and gene therapy eventually. So the most, uh, uh, the most effective measure is replacement. You probably have heard about that already. Uh, the dose is this. Um, and then usually after the third infusions, the patients are healing very, very nicely and very rapidly. If you made the right diagnosis and then you replace, relatively quickly will the lesions resolve. Of course, if the big leg, I showed you the big ulcer in the leg, that's going to take for a long time to heal if the patient had survived this. But um, if you do have lumps on the, on the belly or small little draining sign, things that happen, usually it heals super quick because the inflammation stops. You know, the inflammation is being controlled. So there's no more destruction of the surrounding fat. All right, so what's the role of the replacement therapy? Alpha-1 antitrypsin therapy has relevant anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory properties. So it means it modulates the immune system or control the immune system. You know, a disease that you may have, that people know more, except you, I say like lupus, for example. Lupus erythematosus is a disease of the immune system that becomes totally crazy and hurt the, you know, the joints and, 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 uh, and, um, and the kidneys, for example. So, but that replacement modulate. Is it used in lupus? No, but it's used in many other things, interestingly. It's been studied. To, it can even prevent development of rheumatoid arthritis. It can protect organs when the, when the blood is being recirculated. Yeah, you know, we have to, if you do have a heart surgery, they have to divert the blood to make sure everything survives. But sometimes the kidneys may be hurt and the heart may be hurt. And alpha-1 antitrypsin replacement during, or during, given during the surgery can prevent that type of damage. It may eventually, even if it's not really new, may have other indication eventually. So it's even been useful in cystic fibrosis and fibromyalgia. Maybe you've heard this earlier today. And also it could be used for type 1 diabetes. So there is properties of this that we don't even know about. So alpha-1 antitrypsin does not suppress, like I mentioned, but rather modulate. So modulate, like I said, makes it work better. The production of, of pro and anti-inflammatory molecules, down-regulating and hyperinflammation. Hyper means too much inflammation. So down-regulating decrease too much inflammation without impairing the normal protective immuno Im 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 immuno in inflammatory response. So when you have replacement, your immune system works better, but it's not weaker. That's what it means. So in conclusion, I hope <laughs> I didn't, I went a bit fast, but we can take a lot of questions. Um, you know, the role of antitrypsin in the skin, so its role is basically to prevent too much inflammation, no destruction of the fat cells, no destruction of the collagen and the, fi the elastic fibers in the fat, so it's protected from from dying and draining and making horrible wounds. The, fa the skin manifestations, it can be seen sometimes as systemic vasculitis. It's a bit, com a, a bit more common to find an action line with it, but it's very, which is a, another type of vasculitis. Uh, but the paniculitis is the one to remember, and it can follow in only one third of the cases minor trauma. Two thirds, it can just happen spontaneously. The paniculitis is a condition that when it happens, it feels like bruising in the skin, it's painful. If there's a bit too much of, of the lumps happening, you may have a fever, so that's why doctors may think you have an infection, but it's not an infection, it's inflammation. And some of those lesions sometimes will drain that oil I talked to you about, and that be can become 
can be pretty, pretty dramatic. And how we manage, if it's mild and if replacement is not indicated, then you can use Dapsone, you can use Colchicine, protection of the skin, good wound care, but in theory, replacement is probably the best treatment. And thank you very much. I hope I, don't, I didn't gross you out too much with the pictures. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, great. One of the slides you had, you had four uh, increasing intensity of the paniculitis. In the upper left-hand corner, there was one that was just like reddish bumps and uh, maybe some blisters. My question is, if you have the uh, just just the red redness, the, the very minor form, if you get it again, do you get a progressively worse form, or can you just stay at that one? grade of paniculitis or does it get worse as does the disease progresses i cannot really you know i cannot really answer clearly about this i do not believe that it, you know, can you can develop severe disease even if you had mild disease it depends how much inflammation is being triggered if there was for example a blunt trauma if a patient has mild disease but gets a blunt trauma it could be pretty dramatic and then it's a cascade that may not stop okay so I can't say that a mild person will remain mild. Um, I just, I hope you answer your question. Thank There's you. a lot not known because it's so rare, right? Unless Dr. Boudreau has an answer to this. No, okay, all right. Any other questions? The skin was the entry for this, and I didn't insist on this, you're totally right. All the patients I've seen myself, we made a diagnosis, and then yes, there was a bit of COPD, but it was not investigated uh, uh, maybe fully uh, to understand the cause of the COPD. Often they're a smoker, you assume. Sometimes in medicine, you never must assume. You must always make sure you do due diligence for all patients and make sure you investigate them properly. So you're right, your question is amazing. Yes, it can just be the first manifestation of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Dr. Broussard, I think we have another question back here. Hi there. So you're saying that the prevalence is not in children? You've never seen it in children? Well, I've never seen it. I think it's possible. I suppose when you have very severe deficiency, I suppose it can happen in children. Um, so Jacqueline, the reason... So but that when you show statistics, it's always the mean. So most patients are within 30 and 60 years old. Yeah. It does not mean you don't have a, even a rarer case at the age of two or three. It can happen in children. I, but I feel but that maybe Jacqueline was one of those rare cases yeah. where he had uh, something on his leg. We kept you know, treating it and treating it and treating it. Uh, it was kind of dried out because of how much we were treating it. Um, but then all of a sudden that picture of that black, that is what happened to him. Wow. And, okay. and he, he went down so quickly and we almost lost him because of the fever so high and just everything started to fail at that point. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to oh, mention no, no. that. No, you're totally right. It can happen in children, but it's even rarer. Like yeah. I said, the bulk, like 80% of patients are within 30 to 60. does yeah. not mean that it doesn't happen at the age of 80 or at the age of six months. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there was, a, there was a pediatric case that was kind of going on. Nobody could identify it. And, and sick kids, you know, they were saying, yeah. oh, well, maybe it's just psoriasis, just keep oh trying God, to okay. treat it, right? <laughs> like, nobody really wanted to, I don't know what but it is. Uh, but adult dermatologists think about this condition way more. I'm an adult dermatologist. Yeah. So that pediatric, because it's probably one in 20 million. How about you call so, them up and so give them a little bit of information? It's probably the only case in the country. <laughs> it probably will be the only case in the country forever, but yeah. um, in, a, in a young child. So this, those, those are, yeah. yeah. But the pathology, if you do do digital, the pathology is pretty, pretty suggestive. So if a biopsy or a deep biopsy isn't done, yeah. you know, and often the pathologist is going to tell us. I mean, we can't say, yes, we want to do this. If you see the oil, it's so classic, you don't think of anything else. You see alpha-1 antitrypsin. Yeah. But, some, but the pathologist will tell us, yes, it's suggestive of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Please do the test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More education. 
more education. Yeah. Yes, that's. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to try and run over to the other side of the room. Another question over here. Sure. Excuse me. I need running shoes. Yes. Oh, I Hi. Uh, I just have a question about uh, paniculitis because I have a feeling that my mom had it. Um, but I don't know what my mom's alpha one, what, what her status would have been. But I've been recently diagnosed as a ZZ. I'm just wondering if uh, paniculitis could actually be hereditary. Mm -hmm. It could be, I suppose. If your mother is also, but well, I it's, don't like, it's know. too recessive genes, so I suppose you don't have your parents who have it. Well, but it may be partial, right? So it, mm -hmm. it can happen in partial. Uh, you, you know, you don't necessarily have to have very low level. You can have a bit well, low Well, I know low in level. my mom's family, um, her siblings as well, a, few, a couple of them had li unexplained like ulcers. And okay. what I was seeing was very familiar. Yeah. So, and my grandmother, my great grandmother had them as well. So, but the most common cause of leg ulcers is venous leg and, you know, venous or varicose vein ulcers. And that mm -hmm. is familial. Mm -hmm. So 25% of patients we see have a family history of this, but I mean, a blood test is, could be done easily or... Um, well, they're passed away now. Unfortunately. So. <laughs> and, but paniculitis occurs on the legs frequently. It's the most common site. So venous disease create paniculitis. Mm -hmm. It's called paniculitis of venous disease. So there is common and common things, but and venous disease is common. Um, so you don't... But maybe she did, but I'm not there to... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, one more question. Hi. Somebody with the MZ gene, could they be prone to paniculitis? Not as prone, but mildly prone. It, it has been reported in this, yes. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank but you. But the most severe, the most dramatic are with the ZZ. Okay, but it can happen with the, yes. Great. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Thank you very much.